All right, let's just start here then. So we've got third house. Um, third house is the house of communication. But, um, it rules all of that. It also rules communications with specific people. Um, these can be family members, general relatives, aunts, uncles, cousins, siblings, even neighbors can come in with a third house. Um, it's, you know, you could also be about, it could also be communication with a wider audience. So this could be um, hearing news as well or receiving information or receiving news, um, contracts, documents uh, could be coming in or you could be initiating that in some way. Um, it can also be things like gossip, hearing things, uh, uh, you know, just hearing things uh, from, uh, from wherever you are or whatever is going on in your life. Um, but it's also about um, short journeys, a short journey may be coming up for you. Um, and this usually involves car travel or maps. Um, so it's a it's a trip that needs to be planned. So possibly that will come in for you as well. Um, but all forms of communication are very, very important. Specifically, contracts and documents um, may come up for you. We've also got issue of medicine woman coming in. So what, I think what this is doing is saying that you need to be careful. Um, this is about what you're saying and what you're projecting uh, outwards to others. Now, now, for some of you, you could be a channeler or you could be disseminating information in some way. Um, and you're connecting via this, uh, you know, you're like a lightning rod and you're connected to heaven in some way or to your angels or to your guides or to whatever it may be. You're downloading information and it has a sort of a healing aspect to it as well. So you are a channel for divine healing power. So I do feel that this is to do with what you're saying, what you're writing, what you're communicating with others. Um, and you may be researching, you may be learning things to do with this. But it's saying that this is about using your words with care, all right? Particularly with Mercury, particularly with third house, use your words with care. Choose your words. This is about manifestation as well. So what you think and what you say must be positive. It must be appropriate um, and, um, and uh, appropriate for the situation. So be careful with that. Um, and use your, use your words, use your power of expression, um, in, uh, to, you know, well, use it well, because you're going to be having this ability, you've got this ability to channel um, energy down through your words or through whatever it is that you're doing in the sphere, it could be even writing, it could be writing things, um, or you could be using that information uh, to help others, someone in your family, it could be because I said third house does cover certain family members and so on. So I'm just thinking that it's really um, to do with choose your words with care, choose your thoughts with care, your expression is very, very important during this period. Now we've got here um, we've got here the eighth house endings and beginnings. So the eighth house is always about cycle shifts. So this is very much about um, um, something ending and something beginning. Now it can be a big cycle that you've already been through. You may be already in the ending or it has ended, and now you're going through that transition phase where you're starting something new. Um, just take it as it resonates for your situation. Um, three and two is five, so definitely May is um, is important for this. Now it can also be it can be endings of all kinds and it can be beginnings of all kinds, and uh, this can also be um, something finance related. So you could be ending the way you have been operating financially up until this point and you're changing something and you're now trying something new you may be changing your portfolios um, the finance um, aspect of the eighth house is big so it's it's all a big money so this is normally your um investments insurances assets banking tax comes in um and um and in some cases it can be um you know like your uh, you know, any kind of investment, anything big. Um, and it's also to do in certain uh, situations, it can be legacies or inheritances may come in with this as well. Um, it's also about sexuality. So for some of you, this may be more of a, more of a focus. And, um, it may be that you're coming into a connection with somebody, um, because there's a beginning here and you may be ending, have ended something, or you may just have been gone, gone through a long cycle of not having a partner. And now you're coming into connection with somebody. But normally the eighth house is, is after, it's after the seventh. So the seventh is the house of commitment when it comes to relationships. And the eighth, the eighth house is how the relationship or the partnership, it can be a business partnership. How is that going to work? Um, from a material and emotional uh, resources point of view. So how are the nuts and bolts going to hold that relationship or that partnership together? So it can be, it can be finance related. It can be, um, 
all the you know all the all the really um, serious parts of a relationship. This is about this is about how the, the nuts and bolts of of that kind of relationship or that partnership. How is that going to work? It's also handling other people's money does also come in with this um, this card as well. The other aspect of this is. Um, a death, but this is not necessarily a physical death. It can be for some people, but it's usually something like a, an ego death or some aspect of your life falls away because you don't need it anymore or you've outgrown it. So you go, that's where the cycle shift comes in. So you've had something in your life for a long period of time. It falls away or just dissolves. And now something new is, is preparing to come in. And it's in some cases, it can be an ego death where you've got used to having things in a certain way, um, emotionally or whatever and now you have to shift and change out of that and um, you know realign your life it can also be about birthing things this can be birthing new conditions this is where the cycle shift comes in the beginnings birthing something it can be birth as well actual birth but it's usually to do with uh, conditions in your life and um, this house also deals with um, it's quite a deep house um, it can be psychic knowledge coming up as well it's also about um, you know, um, sort of almost like the, uh, something that's being regenerated or renewed. So it's like, um, something that is coming out of something that was thought of as ended, over, finished, almost like not, not existent anymore. Something comes out of that. It can be health related, but it can also be out of a circumstance which you thought was over or just didn't ever get off the ground. Nothing happened from it. And a phoenix rises up out of the ashes. There's that regenerative or renewal energy with this as well. So now you've got at the bottom, you've got a sun spirit, which is the most positive card in this um, in this deck. So in any deck, it's always the most positive. So this is a beautiful, beautiful energy. So it could really be that um, something is um, starting to emerge for you now. And the sun, as I said, is radiant. It's fiery. It's powerful. So this could really be you going through a phase where you're leaving an aspect of yourself or your life behind and you're now going into a new beginning. You're transitioning into a different phase. You're becoming more authentic which is the sun energy, becoming more authentic, be becoming more powerful. You're stepping into your own. You're, you're taking ownership of who you are. And um, it can also be feeling radiant or feeling healthy and feeling powerful. So as I said, with the health, this can uh, come in. But it can also be um, aspects of um, your, your your profile or your, um, you know, something that, um, you know, you, it's the raising up of you in some way. Now, this can be um, like uh, sort of you're being favored or you're being pushed into a leadership role or you are taking charge of something in some way. So it's like a leadership role. It could be within your finances um, or it could be in some other arena, um, but you're influential with the sun. Um, it's also about creativity. It's a very creative um, energy. Children sometimes come in with this as well. So that may be a case for you. Certainly you've got Hathor, which is about nurturing and children does come do come in with this card. And also, as I said, birth comes in. So this may be appropriate for some of you. But it's a very positive energy. This is really... Um, very positive card and it's it's that radiant a sunny energy cheerful things looking up it's the return of happiness it's the return of of just um a brighter outlook uh in many many different ways and uh it, but it's also about becoming more powerful in some way so i do feel that you're taking action in something your profile may be rising as well you may be taking a leadership role or you are taking charge of something in some way here um, then we've got um, Hathor, receptivity. Allow yourself to receive. This will increase your intuition, energy, and ability to give to others. So you could be receiving finance, um, or you could be receiving something. Something is coming, or you, your profile could be raised in some way, and this is going to bring rewards for you, whether this is financial uh, or a new cycle for you, or just um, you know some sort of regeneration or renewal. Something like that is coming in for you, um, but it's a very powerful sign, and it's going to create a shift for you. But it's saying be open to receiving, all right? So this could be receiving as in um, like um, people are paying attention to you. So you could be receiving attention of some sort, or you could be receiving a financial boost of some sort, or you could be receiving um, 
better health or a, just a better outlook or uh, or you've gone through your transformation and now you are you know you're on the regenerative or the renewal path but be open to receiving um this is about harnessing abundance for yourself and this this eighth house is a finance house as i said and the sun is is wonderful energy so this is um this is saying that uh, in order to to harness abundance for yourself you need to be able to give and receive in equal measure and this is linked to the masculine and the feminine which is in both of us you have to balance both so giving and receiving um and you've got to balance both in order to to anchor your abundance in your life so um if you're constantly giving um eventually you're going to deplete yourself and then you slip into resentment and just exhaustion as well um so you have to be able to receive and if somebody is giving you something or offering you something or um you're raising your profile in some way or they are you know you're just coming into your own in some way be open to receiving um, any abundance or any kind of any kind of um, goodness that's coming from the universe for you be open to receiving all right and that will balance your energies it will also you know fill your cup up and then you can um, then you can share that with others uh, so it may be that you all are you know you may be in a position to share your abundance with others and this could be family, this could be a legacy, it could be an inheritance, however it comes in for you. But this is about sharing this um, uh, this abundance as well. So, um, but it will sharpen you up, um, being able to receive. Um, giving constantly really just depletes you. So you also have to receive as well. And you have to give back to yourself as well. You have to keep filling up your cup yourself. Nobody else can fill up your cup. Only you can do that. Okay. In some cases, as I said, this may be about nurturing. So this may be about nurturing yourself, nurturing your own financial profile um, and um, your own sexuality, feeding that. Um, it could also be, as I said, a very committed relationship. Where's this relationship going or this partnership? How is it going to work? Um, you need to receive and give in equal measure, but it's also about nurturing. In some cases, as I said, this could be very well to do with children. Um, it's, it's got the, uh, all, to, all child related issues fall in under Hathor as well, but it's also about, I feel nurturing yourself and nurturing your nearest and dearest, um, setting up um, it could be legacy, legacies. It could be financial situations, whatever the, whatever is relevant for you, but be open to receiving. Very important. We've also got here um, Aphrodite. So um, inner goddess. So this is about self-care. So awaken the goddess within you through dance self-care and appreciating your divinity. So I do feel that um, certainly with the sun energy coming in, this is going to be about owning your, you know, coming into your own and giving back to yourself as well so you can give to others but you must give back to yourself as well and you are responsible for your own happiness all right your own health and your own happiness you are responsible for that so with aphrodite inner goddess that's all about that this is about appreciating your sexuality your connection to um, spirituality um, it's it's taking care of yourself and this is financially as well as physically if you need downtime if you need to rest then that's what you do if you need to go and, um, you know, perhaps do a self-care day at the spa or some other, you know, could even just be a massage or whatever it is, or just a nice nap and some downtime away from, you know, from drama and activity and media and so on, then that's what you do. It can also be about, um, you know, doing things for yourself, you know, a few little spoils along the way. Uh, it could be financially or in any other way, but this is about self-care, looking after yourself internally and externally as well, and appreciating your divinity, appreciating who you are, taking ownership for who you are, okay, and appreciating your um, you know, your wisdom, your experience and everything that you've been through in this life so far. But it's, um, you do this through, um, activities that you enjoy. So self care, um, you know, dancing, music, um, it could be yoga. It could be any kind of activity which makes you feel good and uh, just appreciate yourself and, and look after yourself in, in all forms. 